Welcome to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and it's time for us to start another franchise. So in honor of tomorrow being St. Patrick's Day, we're looking at Leprechaun, released in 1993, and the first of the Leprechaun series that contains seven, yes, seven, movies. I'm sorry. In the weeks that follow, we'll watch the titular Leprechaun as he hunts down everyone who dares to steal his pot of gold. His adventures will take him to Las Vegas, Compton, and yes, even outer space. Which are all just different backdrops for the same small bag of tricks he has, which include nebulous magic powers and a penchant for spitting out one-liners so bad that Fred Krueger wouldn't touch them with a 10-foot finger knife. Let that be a lesson to you, lad. Always wear a prophylactic. I need to let you know right off the bat that these movies are awful. None of them are great, and only a couple are halfway decent. And as awesome as Warwick Davis is, the leprechaun himself fucking sucks. He's mean and nasty and hardly ever actually funny. All of these movies are plagued by real low budgets, awful screenwriting, and some of the most horrendous acting I've ever seen. And I know that you might be asking, why do them then? Why not do a series more people want to see, like Halloween or Saw? Well, because, y'all, this channel's about the horror genre as a whole, and we've got to look at everything. The good, the bad, and in the case of Leprechaun, the ugly. Maybe we'll get lucky and at least have some decent kills to watch. Let's find out and get to them. The movie begins with, well to me it looked like a leprechaun to me. Who else seen the leprechaun say yeah? In a voiceover, Lep says that anyone who steals his gold gon' die. So that's probably not good news for Dan O'Grady, cause I don't think he earned the money for that limousine at his 9 to 5 job drinking Jameson. He's all decked out in a suit with pants that make him look like a backup dancer for MCO Hammer, and he's telling his lady wife that they're rich now because of something he's found. GOLD! Yep, GOLD! That he says he got from a leprechaun after catching him. Inside their house, Mrs. O'Grady hears a little boy voice coming from inside Dan's suitcase. It's singing Mary had a little lamb and complaining about the cramped conditions in there. I can't breathe. Please open the suitcase. I'm gonna suffocate. But when she opens it, it's just a pissed off leprechaun yelling about his gold and pushing her down the stairs. The tumble breaks Mrs. O'Grady's neck and kills her, giving us our first kill a mere five minutes in. Between this and that scene in Hercules, I might just never help a little kid again. It's always a trap. Lep confronts Dan and asks him where his gold is, while also complimenting his late wife's brewing skills. Your wife makes a fine pot of tea, daddy me boy. But Dan ain't playing around. He's got a four leaf clover, which is the active ingredient in Lep Be Gone, and show enough, that Lep Be Going, Going, Gone. Lep flees to the basement to give Dan's dead wife a shoulder massage and perform the worst ventriloquism show I've ever seen. Give him the gold, Dan. He's a nice little leprechaun. And then Dan just shoots him with a gun. Okay, then puts his limp little leprechaun body in a big wooden crate, setting the clover on top as a sort of protection. He nails that boy up and gets ready to light a leprechaun bonfire, but the little green man apparently uses his powers to give Dan a stroke before he can set it off. It's ten years later, and crew Cruising up to O'Grady's fine North Dakota home is J.D. Redding and his daughter Tori, played by a 22-year-old Jennifer Aniston in her first ever theatrical film role. Her character is the worst kind of cliché. I'm going to be miserable here. There's no swimming pool, there's no shopping malls, there's no cable. Yep, the spoiled rich California girl who just, oh my god, can't even. Like, what is this even? Want to know how spoiled she is? It's friggin' 1991 and she has a cell phone. What? She bumps into this hunk Nathan and spills his paint thinner, but when she offers him money to replace it, he sticks it to her with a real condescending sense of small town morality. You knock over my can of paint thinner and then you offer me 20 bucks. How about that? Maybe you said you were sorry. What? You want an apology instead of money? You can't buy groceries with sorries, dude. And if that wasn't belittling enough... Well, I just think it's funny the way girls are always afraid of spiders and stuff, you know? Wow, this dude's the worst. Even if he is rocking the muscly handyman Aladdin look. His challenge to Tori's bravery makes her decide to stay, so she tells her dad to put her suitcase back inside. And maybe while you're at it, Pops, change that outfit. You look like a cowboy who's worried about his upcoming hunting trip with Dick Cheney. Let's get some characters who aren't the absolute worst, like Nathan's precocious little brother Alex and his Lenny-like friend Ozzy. They're actually kind of enjoyable, even if Alex looks like a good guy to all come to life. Probably doesn't hurt that Ozzy's played by Mark Holton, aka Francis, from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Their antics lead to Ozzy getting covered in blue paint, so he heads inside to get hosed down, where he hears a little kid voice singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. <laughs> He follows the voice into the basement, where the little boy voice begs Ozzy to let him out. And after knocking the clover off the top of the crate, Lep's free to punch out of the box and get straight back to Lepin, which apparently means eating bugs? Well, it's good protein at least. Get them gains. Ozzy asks what he is, and Lep spells it out for him. See that? The buckles on me shoes? Why, I'm a leprechaun! He wants to shine Ozzy's shoes, but first he needs his gold. The Ozman doesn't know what he's talking about, so he runs away, successfully escaping the leprechaun and his weak-ass powers. You only got away because me powers are weak! Ozzy runs outside with a 
fanciful proclamation about a leprechaun in the basement. And of course, nobody believes him, even though there's a rainbow up in the sky. It's a magic rainbow. Okay, Ozzy, even though there's a magic rainbow up in the sky. Ozzy runs off to see what's at the end of it, and Alex follows to wrangle him. But instead of a pot of gold, it's just a rusty old piece of shit truck. Wow, Lap, your powers really are weak. But actually, it turns out, there really is a gold coin in the cab of the truck. And a whole bag of more behind the seat, hot damn! To test if it's real, Ozzy bites down on one of them, but then he goofs up and swallows it, so now they're down a coin. Nice going, Jaws. But there's plenty of gold left, so much, in fact, that Alex gets excited about the possibilities of what they can do with it. We can get you an operation to make you smart and fix your brain. But, but I, I'm smart. Oh my god, that's actually kind of heartbreaking. Besides Warwick Davis's enthusiastic performance, Alex and Ozzy are the only parts of this movie worth watching. Tori and Nate are bonding over paint and her quilt-style denim shorts when Lep crawls underneath the truck and starts caressing Tori's leg. It's super fucking stupid, but she somehow thinks that it's Nate. Nathan. Yeah, Tori. Even though you just saw Nathan go the other way, he somehow doubled back, crawled under the truck, and is lightly brushing your ankle as a way to flirt with you. Man, I hate these characters so much. When she sees that it couldn't be him, she flips out and winds up with a scratched ankle. But Lep runs off to hide behind a tree and make some kitty noises to trick Tori, Nate, and JD. When JD thinks the cat sounds hurt, he tries to fish it out of a tree stump, only to get a nasty bite on his hand, courtesy of the leprechaun. They drive JD to the emergency room in town, so Alex and Ozzy take off to get their gold coin appraised at Collectibles Joe's Coins. But somehow Leprechaun knows what they're up to, so he steals a trike from the barn and rides his minty ass all the way into town, arriving at the exact same coin shop at the exact same time. Collectibles Joe says the coin looks pretty valuable, but he'd like to keep it overnight to study it. After Alex and Ozzy leave, Def Lep appears out of the shop owner's safe to bite him in the leg and judge his business acumen. Bad shop owner! Bad shop owner! <laughs> because the shop owner had been in possession of one of his gold coins, Lep decides to kill him with a pogo stick. Yep, a pogo stick kill, accompanied by the Leprechaun singing a little ditty. This so Wait, why is Joe's face all bloody? Let's just bouncing around on his chest. In any case, it kills him, giving the leprechaun another kill, as well as another pair of shoes to shine, because he's got a real compulsion to do that. It's almost as strong as his compulsion to make shitty jokes. He'll bounce back in no time. Yeah, Lep's the kind of dude who's always DMing Freddy and Chucky and asking if they can hang. Lep comments that with one coin in his possession, he's got 99 more to find. Then he eyes a car perfectly sized for his diminutive stature that he ends up driving down the road. Pretty fun. I guess, but no way that thing is street legal. So he ends up getting pulled over by a cop who just thinks Lep's a little kid in a mask, despite Lep claiming he's a 600-year-old leprechaun. Leprechaun scratches him in the face, which was originally the end of the scene, but when the studio Trimark wanted to change this from a PG-13 comedy to a gorier R-rated horror, they added this whole chase sequence through the woods, which is completely uninventive and goes on for way too goddamn long. It ends after Lep uses his magic to bounce all over the place, before eventually appearing right on top of the cop's shoulders, where he breaks his neck to kill the poor guy. Best check he's fully dead, Lep. Yep, looks pretty dead. Good job, dude. At a diner, Tori and Nate are having more culture clashes over the menu items. What I wanted was a watercress salad and an Evian water, but they don't have that here. And discussing how much it sucks that her dad has to stay overnight in the hospital. That means no one's back at the O'Grady house when Leprechaun gets there and starts going all finders keepers on the place as he looks for his gold. But dude doesn't know how to keep his eye on the prize. He keeps getting distracted. First by a box of off-brand cereal called Lucky Clovers that apparently tastes like shit. Yeah, no kidding, dude. Clovers are for pies, not breakfast cereal. And then by a collection of shoes that Lep just needs to polish, man. Dude's got a bigger shoe fetish than Jerry Brutus. What up, mine hunter? The gang gets back to the farmhouse and finds everything in disarray, except for the nicely polished shoes. Well, it could have been a bear. Uh, no, dude, it couldn't have. Bears don't shine shoes. Why is everyone in this movie so stupid? Ozzy tries to point out that, hey, that leprechaun he keeps talking about wanted to shine his shoes, but they're still not buying it, and they get to cleaning the place up with one more snide, condescending remark from Nate. You know how to work one of these, right? God, dude, fuck off! A little bell noise eventually lures Nate outside where he trips into a trap, prompting the leprechaun to run out and reveal himself and talk shit all up in Nate's face. But then Nate just beats the shit out of the little dude with a flashlight. <laughs> leprechaun sucks, man. The others run outside to find Lep biting Nate in the leg, and then they all take turns just kind of beating the old boy with assorted items. Man, this is the least frightening horror movie villain attack ever. Lep's such a little shit. Alex gets the shotgun, and Nate shoots Lep in the chest with it, giving them a minute to free Nate from the bear trap so he can just go ahead and shoot off blindly into a bush half a dozen times. What's up, man? Think you're playing with infinite ammo or something? Something? With the phone line dead, the gang decides they need to take Nate into town to get help. But the truck won't start, probably because there's a leprechaun in the hood. Or under the hood, sorry. He won't be in the hood for a few movies yet. He busts out the windshield and manages to bite Ozzy's ear before Tori takes the cigarette lighter and burns Lep in the nose with it, causing him to run off to the barn and retreat. He comes out again in another miniature vehicle. Where did this one come from? It looks like a fucking battle bot. He drives this little Lep mobile into the side of the truck, somehow with enough force to flip it end over end. Lep chases the kids inside the house, where they slam the door on his hand, cutting it off. But as we'll see, Lep is basically able to take unlimited amounts of damage.
damage, especially in the case of shotgun shells. So he just picks his hand up and runs away to reattach it off screen. Tori remembers that she has a strange alien device from the future. My portable! And uses it to call the police. She manages to tell them where they're at and that they need help, but then the call cuts out. The battery died. Oh, you probably installed that new OS, huh? The sheriff of the town, who looks like he's got one foot in the grave and is racing through a pack of cigs to plant the other one just as deep, radios one of his officers to go check out the O'Grady place. But it turns out to be the cop that Lep killed, and now he's using his magic voice changing abilities to ensure he won't have Johnny Law interfering with his hunt for gold. Tori patches everyone up, but when she continues to deny that it was a leprechaun out there, Ozzy lets slip that they found a bag of gold, which they hid down in the well. So Tori pumps the shotgun and heads outside to fetch a pal of gold coins, so they can return it to the leprechaun and he can stop being such a little shit to them. As soon as she gets it, Lep appears with some stunning special effects and takes the bag from her. What do you think, Lep? Does it pass the sniff test? It smells like me gold. I guess it does. Satisfied, he runs off to count his coins, surrounded by his collection of vehicles. I think Lep and Jay Leno would get along. He discovers that he's short one coin, the one in Ozzy's gut, so he attacks them, and we get the closest thing to Leprechaun versus Chucky we'll probably ever see. He plays Magic Peekaboo in the kitchen, disappearing and reappearing in different cabinets, like the little shit that he is, before he pops out of a drawer and sexually assaults Nate. Nate gets his revenge, though, when he answers one of Lep's shitty jokes with a hilariously blunt shotgun blast. I'm right here, and I ain't no Santa Claus. Haha, <laughs> sit your ass down, fool. But of course, he's still alive and manages to run away from the gang, leading them to do some more exhausting leprechaun hunting. I don't mean it's tiring for the characters, I'm saying the audience is exhausted by now if they're still watching this movie. There's some fun and games on a skateboard for a minute before Nate winds up shooting Lep again. How many shells are in his little leprechaun body at this point? But of course, Lep is able to escape once more, and this time he taunts them by calling on the dead phone line and imitating his idol, Freddy Krueger. Do you need a hand? Ozzy says that old man O'Grady might be able to shed some light on this leprechaun issue, so they decide to send Tori to the retirement home he's been in since his stroke 10 years ago. To distract the leprechaun long enough for her to get away, they toss a ton of shoes at him, and Lep's libido just takes over, man. He can't help but fuck those shoes. His pursuit of them is put on pause long enough for Tori to get away in her jeep, while the others head back inside. It doesn't keep him distracted for long enough, though, and in an attempt to make sure leprechaun uses every single wheeled transportation option available, he follows Tori to the retirement home on a pair of fucking roller skates. She gets there and finds the front desk guard conveniently asleep, so she's able to sneak through this abandoned looking retirement home and find Mr. O'Grady in his room. But wait a minute, that's not Mr. O'Grady, it's a goddamn leprechaun, oh shit! She runs away and he pursues her in a wheelchair, but even with the camera sped up to help him along, she manages to get into the elevator safely. And that's where Mr. O'Grady's body crashes through the ceiling. He tells Tori that a fresh four-leaf clover will do the trick for a little green friend, and then he dies. Yeah, I don't know how his body happened to crash through the elevator ceiling like that either, but whatever. Why bother trying to make your movie good now when there's only 15 minutes left. Tori heads back to the farmhouse and tries to find a four-leaf clover, but Leprechaun shows up and gleefully chases her away. She finds the police car, that's good, but then discovers the cop's corpse inside, that's bad. Lep shows up and she sticks him in the eye with a baton, that's good, but then he rips the door off the police car, which is bad. Can she go now? Sure, but not before she has to watch Lep rip the eye out of the cop's body to replace his own with. Well, hey, at least Leps are made with interchangeable parts. Leprechaun gets shot for like the 27th time by Nate, and they rush back to the clover field to find their good luck charm. Tori manages to find one, and it's positive positively glowing with magic. When Lep attacks them again, he's able to run down Ozzy and slash his face a whole bunch with his shoe buckle, but Alex is here with a clover, a slingshot, and a precocious one-liner to save the day. Fuck you, Lucky Charms. The shot goes straight into Lep's mouth and he stumbles back against the well, where we get to witness the best looking effects of the movie. Aside from the Leprechaun's makeup done by Gabe Bartalos, that shit's great and he deserves a lot of credit for it. Leprechaun melts into a gooey green mess and some more crazy special effects take over to transition him into an even nastier looking beat up Leprechaun puppet thing that falls back into the well and releases its energy with a bunch of glowing green lights. But like I said earlier, Lep's a huge fan of Chucky, so he too wants to do the whole keep coming back thing. I want the door out. But I've watched Chucky. I know Chucky. Chucky was in kill counts of mine. Leprechaun, you're no Chucky. And to prove it, Nate just knocks him back down there and pours a bunch of gas into the well, then finishes the Leprechaun off with a match and a giant explosion. Yep, you've got an ancient magical demon force and it's killed by, uh, some fire. Great. But Lep doesn't go on the count, cause some rhyming narration lets us know he considers this only a temporary setback. I'll not rest till I have me go. Curse this well that me soul shall dwell, till I find the magic that breaks me spare. God, that rhyming was all over the place. Did it even follow a structure? I'm sure some of you nerds will tell me in the comments, but in the meantime, let's get to the numbers. Only four people died in Leprechaun, and half of them were neck snaps. What the fuck? 
Of the victims, three were men and only one was a woman, giving us a 75-25 gender split with more dead dudes. With a runtime of 91 minutes, that comes out to a kill on average every 22.75 minutes. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to Joe. I don't like the bloody face thing, but killing a dude with a pogo stick is pretty creative, and I'd wager it's the only kill most people even remember from this movie. Dull machete for lamest kill will be Dan O'Grady. Even though the two neck snaps were lame, his random appearance through the elevator ceiling just makes no goddamn sense, man. And that's it. Leprechaun was filmed in 1991 and released in 93, and despite it being worse than a real bad case of Shamrock Shake shits, it spawned five sequels and a remake. We'll look at the first sequel, Leprechaun 2, next week, but until then, I'm James A. Janice. This has been the Kill Count. Thanks a lot for watching my Kill Count for Leprechaun. Just in time for the Leprechaun Kill Count, we have a new pin. It's the Golden Chainsaw. Gold! I'm really excited over this one. It looks very cool. We got it done in a unique style that looks like antique gold. And it's the same logo that I use at the end of every Kill Count. So now you can be the coolest kill, if that's appealing. They're only eight bucks at deadmeatstore.com. Get them today. I'll see you guys later. Be good people.